like, oh my gosh, this car looks so familiar. Where have we seen a car like this before? So this is Spanky's uh, little project car, and she's great with child, and the fuel pump went out again, she says, so I've done some testing and I've determined that the fuel pump's not bad. Um, if you take a power probe and run power to it, basically it'll pump into the gas can and it's doing great. Turns out uh, the two wires that go to this, there's a white and black and a blue and black that go here. White and black's ground, blue and black wasn't getting power. So I followed it with the tone generator up to here and then back up over the dash and then down into there and then that's it. And then when I was probing in the engine compartment, I found that this wire right here also had tone, which is interesting. I didn't know about the, di I know about pulling codes with a diagnostic thing, but I didn't know that if you uh, jump it, it's actually labeled fuel pump and battery positive. You can actually get the fuel pump to come on that way and bypass the circuit. Otherwise, you've got this guy in there. And as his name tag suggests, it is a circuit opening relay. And this is basically your fuel pump relay. And where it lives is just in the underneath the radio between the kick panels of the driver and passenger side. And it's just right in front of the radio. Say so this is the radio, passenger side feet, driver side feet. Uh, below that on the very base level, the floor pan, is the ECM. And then right in front of it, right on the floor pan, there's this little relay. And this faces it. So this is the culprit. Um, you go through the manual. I was checking all the fusible links, you know, like all those little uh, heavy duty fuses with a little window on top. They're all good. I checked the EFI 15 amp and the ignition 10 amp. Check. I checked the H fuse, um, which is basically the one right at the battery. And I checked the EFI main relay. It was good. I swapped it with a known good relay. Uh, the fuel pump runs on its own. And then at the last but not least is a circuit opening relay that I just introduced you to. And that was the fault. Um, if you get down in here and look at the contacts. See, if you look at the contacts, you can see that there's a bunch of black crud sticking out right there. And that's preventing it from making good contact. So there's probably some other, other things that are causing that issue. Um, I haven't checked the resistor that goes through. You can see where the resistor lives down in there. Just right underneath goes through comes out on the other side right there so I haven't checked that I'm sure it's fine uh, but basically these things are expensive they're like a hundred dollars fifty dollars just basically stupid expensive and in the wrecking yard typically you won't find them because they're hard to find for one and if you do find it you know it's just an empty plug so let me show you where this came from while we're at it this is just going to be a quick video. This is all the stuff I would have liked to have known getting into this. This is a little bit before my time. And those relays just really don't go bad very often. But if you pull the carpet back on the passenger side, and if you pull this back, that's the PCM 749 guy. And then there's that little metal plate that's sticking out from it right there. You see the metal plate? It's like a tongue. That's what the... Um, circuit opening relay goes to and you can see that gray plug that's the gray plug that I unplugged it from so that was very very difficult for me to find even with internet help because everybody says it's right above the computer um, other diagrams show it you know like with just like the stick figure car and it seems like it's here or here you know like on the pickup trucks so I wasn't sure where to look and nothing says fuel pump relay in here um, the other one that it was, you got your alternator, this guy, and then this one is another one that it could be. And like I say, they're just the ones with the little window on top. See, they're calling this a fusible link. And you can see that it's just nice and shiny and doing great. Um, there's a couple of fuses you got to check. Uh, this is a 15 amp one, and then this is the EFI relay. It says EFI F heater, something like that, front heater. And then the other fuse that you got to check for your fuel pump. The other fuse that you got to check for your fuel pump is this 10 amp fuse right here in the corner. ECU ignition 15 amp. It's the middle one up front. Every single fuse in there is good, so I knew it was fine. Somebody in the audience wants to hear the tone generator go. 
So I've got that into the blue and black wire, BLB. So we'll put this pin on there. Uh, we've got our ground all hooked up so it doesn't think that everything's ground, everything doesn't ring. We'll switch the switch over to tone and then we'll push a button and see where we're at. Got red wire, we're getting that loud and clear. Just follow it up the carpet. Excuse me. So I start out here. It's not in the door. It's nowhere else. It's like it goes deep right there. Lose it, pick it back up. So it goes into this plug right here, and then from the plug it goes behind the fuse block there. You really gotta dig if you're gonna get to it. But basically it goes all the way up and over and then back down to opening relay. And then as you're in the engine compartment, there's nothing. And all of a sudden there's something. What is that something? Is it here? Is it there? Where is this blue wire? It's actually a blue wire down here in this harness I expected to be doing stuff. But it's specifically, you can see on the little uh, sticker, you got battery positive here, and then it says FP right there for fuel pump. There you can see it a little better. So, is it this one, battery positive? Isn't that cool? What a fun tool, but it was still a pain in the neck to find anyway because of the remote location. Somebody else wants to see the fuel pump run, so we'll do that. So you've got your blue and black wire is the positive. Your white wire is the negative. So I'm just using my power probe. It's supplying ground to the white wire, and then I apply the power to this wire. I'll turn the sound off and you'll see it light up. You can hear the fuel running into the gas can. This fuel tank's really rusty. When I was trying to empty the tank out to make it lighter to go back in, I found that it was uh, pouring orange gas. You got green diesel, and instead of straw fuel, it was like orange fuel, orange with rust. So maybe that has something to do with the uh, seldom failing open circuit relay thing actually burning contacts maybe it was getting messed up from that here's something that people may run into on this when you go to look at your manual for example this is the Chilton one uh, diagram 7 and 8 are applicable to this vehicle being a 91 so when you go to diagram 7 you can see where it says to circuit opening relay and then it says see fuel pump circuit okay well let's see fuel pump circuit maybe it's on 8 uh, you go to 8, it says to circuit opening relay, and it says see fuel pump circuit. Uh, let me just jump to the chase. There's nothing in here of a wiring diagram for the fuel pump circuit. Um, the best you can get is one with the fuel or, or circuit opening relay. So anyway, I found one online that's somewhat helpful. It basically is a wiring diagram of this, and uh, that's it. Otherwise, they all seem to go into the PCM which isn't helpful. I know Spanky replaced this tank with a new one, but I don't know if she did the fuel pump with it. I'm looking at this. This looks like it's really old to me. I'm not real excited about putting an Airtex pump in it. Probably should just keep my mouth shut, but I'm really not excited about the results that I've had in the past with them. You can see what that could should look like and what that does look like isn't great. So we're gonna go ahead and replace the pump while we have this thing out of here. I mean, that thing looks like it's been in there a long time, but the reason why I think maybe she did is when you look in there, it's just looking pretty good now. Look at all the garbage in there, though. Wow, that's a lot of plastic shavings and debris and yuck. When I was looking down through here, it was really rusted. Let me show you what I mean. So when you look in the filler neck, it's just complete rustville, but actual inside the tank, hmm not too bad better than expected except for all that black stuff upon looking at the derelict connections for this thing and how rusty they are that's a positive for this thing i think it might be in our best interest to make some new connections just have to remember that power comes from this one 
and the ground comes from that one. Just imagine the ground's lower. And the little post, and they're marked, but the little post is the, the power one. See, look how corroded and rusted and gross that is. That needs to be wire brushed badly. It's getting better. As you can see, I've got the little vent line or return line capped off. And I've got a whole bunch of access to all this junk now. So all the gas is tipped back to the back. I've got a bunch of it in that gas can over there. And uh, we're just going to clean that out now. Yuck. I don't even know. It looks like plastic shavings. I'm going to see if I can salvage this just to get the thing going. If you look between those two contacts, there's a little thing right there that sticks up. And whenever you go to close the contact, it can't close all the way. It just hits that little piece of carbon right there. There it is. You can see it right there. So what I'm going to do is just take this little piece of razor blade because it's the only thing thin enough to get in there without hurting something. I'm just going to chip it off. All right, well that failed miserably. It's like welded on there. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to try is just dragging sandpaper through. Just put it back, push it down, drag it through, and repeat. Wow, that was surprisingly effective. Now it makes great contact. I'm so glad I filmed that part. That worked really nicely. So you got to remember, we've done a lot to this little car. We've done the fuel pump, the wires to it. We did the cutout switch, um, new strainer. Cleaned out the fuel tank. I haven't filled it up with a lot of gas. It's got a little gas in it. Let's give it a shot, see what we got. That was bad, but it's running. That's a lot better than it was. It was dead. Now it lives. You're welcome, Spanky. While doing research on doing the circuit opening relay, I knew I didn't want to spend 90 bucks on a new one. They're hard to find in a wrecking yard. So I found a couple of diagrams, one for testing the old one and another one to show how to bypass it using a regular relay and a small diode as shown here. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below. Thanks. Your white wire is the negative and this is unplugged. Flipper real.